TV. I'm your host, Christina Marie. Well, tonight we're going to be talking about a topic here. Uh, if you are walking with your honey on the beach and you come across a really cute little seal, what do you do? Okay, we're going to find out today because with me tonight I have Marjorie Bohr. Marjorie is a volunteer for the Marine Mammal Center. Hi, Marjorie. Hi, Christina. And I just thought I'd start off with that because I'm sure you get a lot of those people. Yeah, that's a happens actually and that's why what the biggest function of the center is actually one of the big ones is to um, rescue stranded marine mammals so in the Bay Area typically there are three common types of animals that we see and everybody always says seal right away mm -hmm. and actually one of the first questions they'll ask you is to try to figure out which species it is is if does it have ear flaps so that's a secret right away the first so thing you look for is that a secret so ear flaps <laughs> in uh, seals only uh, sea lions actually oh, sea lions. So seals do not so to get back to the original question about if you're walking on the beach and you see one, what do you do? Mm -hmm. um, you can certainly notice if they have ear flaps, Okay. but um, stay away from them. They're actually federally protected um, animals and they are wild. So they look really cute and sweet, but they will bite you. Well, you know, there's so many Disney cartoons and things and you're thinking, oh, cute little seal, yeah. like a puppy or yeah. something like that. So yeah. have you ever had an instance where somebody did try to approach a seal and get hurt from that? Um, yes, actually. Um, and another big problem with that is, particularly for the harbor seals, um, the pups actually stay with their mothers, and the mothers will leave them on the beach oftentimes to go out and fish. So people see them, and they're really cute. They look like little stuffed animals, and they'll pick them up and think that they're doing the right thing. But if the mother you know, then sees them move their baby, maybe they won't come back. So one of the biggest reason that we pick up those pups is because they've been somehow separated from their mother. So, you know, you might think it's the best thing in the world to do to move them, and they look like they're, you know, abandoned and cold and cute, but they're wild animals, and usually they're better off, you know, <laughs> by themselves or where they are. Now, when someone picks up a pup, um, does it, like, transfer the smell of a human or something like that to the point of where the mother won't come back for it? If, I'm is not it really sure like if it's that? that necessarily. Yes, in theory, absolutely. Um, one of the things that they train us to do as stranding personnel is to, to look out in the water. And oftentimes you can actually see an animal out there that might be the mother. Mm -hmm. So we'll actually, in that case, put an animal on watch, for instance, and leave it on the beach and see if the mother will come back. And if not, then we'll pick it up and bring it into the, to the center. Now, okay, so that is what you're not supposed to do. So now <laughs> what is it that you should do <laughs> if uh, you see a baby seal? Um, well, you should... Uh, try to take note of like the first thing as I said we want to do is identify what kind of an animal it is but basically what the first thing you should really do is call the Marine Mammal Center okay and they have trained people like myself that they will then dispatch to go out and assess the animal mm -hmm. and this is a great example of why uh, this is kind of funny and um, important is um, just yesterday actually I got called um, at home to go out and check out a harbor seal that was in Berkeley. Mm -hmm. And apparently this animal had an orange tag, which means it had already been in rehab. So I went out there prepared to pick up a small animal and it actually turned out to be a big sea lion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a different, you need a different transportation exactly. for something like yeah, that. Yeah, and a much larger net. <laughs> <laughs> now sea lions, how big do they get to be? I know those get to be pretty gigantic. Yeah, they the biggest ones that we will see in the center are probably 400 pounds. Oh my God. So yeah, the big males, you know, like the ones you see at Pier 39. Right, They're right. They're really big and... and more typical of the ones we have in the rehab are smaller, but we do, you know, occasionally get the big ones that come in with wounds usually or entanglements that are caused by humans. Well, that's one thing I was going to ask you. What, uh, what things do you see being a volunteer there? What types of damage, uh, what kinds of disease, or what, kind, what, are, what are bringing the seals into you, in the mammals? There is, they can be sick, like they get pneumonias and they get bacterial kidney infections and they... They, if they're just learning how to swim and fish on their own, they can, you know, sort of be slower to do that and just get malnourished. Mm -hmm. um, also, and one of the biggest and obviously most important things to us, it's immediate pickup is human interaction, things like entanglements or gunshots, which we do see, actually. Gunshots? Absolutely. Yeah. Why, why would someone shoot a seal? Well, if you're a fisherman, for instance, and the seals are eating your fish or competing for your fish, you oh. might not be so happy about that. That's <laughs> not nice. I know. It's not nice wow. at all. Okay. There was actually an incident um, last year that was quite uh, public publicized, and 
it was up in the Delta and a salmon fisherman, there was a, a sea lion that was shot twice, actually right between the eyes, a big adult male, which is really sad. So, and that's what apparently they actually did track the, the guy down and he said he was catching my fish. Well, oh, his fish. Yeah, whose okay. fish are they? Well, how many fish are, exactly. you know, one seal going to be taking out of your net? <laughs> yeah. then? So you mentioned Pier 39, and I believe one thing I read off of the website is that a lot of seals were having pups around uh, an unusual kind of place like Pier 39, mm -hmm. and so it's not quite the same way to raise them and sometimes abandon them. Is yeah, that what happens? this is actually the first year, to my knowledge, and I think I'm not misstating this, but the first year that we've seen actually pups, usually they're born at what we call rookeries, and they're out at the Fairlawns or down in the Channel Islands or at Fitzgerald. So typically the animals will haul out in a, not a public place and have their pups. Mm -hmm. um, so these births that were happening in public places this year was very unusual. And typically the pups have to nurse with their mothers, and we've never taken care of them before, and it's sort of like we're not equipped for that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just a scenario that's never presented itself to the center. And like, then what do we do with those animals? They have to basically live in captivity mm -hmm. because, you know, the other big challenge about rehab medicine is to not imprint the animals. And this What does that mean? Well, it exactly? means you make them accustomed to humans. Okay. And they would then, if their mother's not there and we're feeding them, mm -hmm. they're going to associate us with food. So they would um, presumably not be releasable in the wild. Because they're not used to it and they would die? Exactly. Uh -huh. They would not know how to, they would be just more accustomed to our way of life. They would be going to Starbucks. Going <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Your little seal that's good, having a devil latte. Exactly. A devil <laughs> herring latte. So, <laughs> so you want to make sure that you keep it as natural as possible so when you do the release then they're continuing their life as it should be. Exactly. Uh -huh. They're not, the biggest thing, sea lions are actually very curious about people as you know when you see those guys at um, Pier 39. And they are potentially um, the most dangerous. So if you are in terms of imprinting with a human, mm -hmm. so if you get a sea lion pup, and you have to raise it, they're going to know you as their parent or whatever. And if you release it into the wild, they'd probably just keep coming back to look for humans. So it's almost like a puppy then. Exactly. Are, now, yeah. Are all the sea marine mammals? Um, are they all very much like that? I mean, is it just particular to that particular mammal that is more friendly with humans? Or yeah, I think the sea lions are um, known to be more curious about humans, and they're more. I don't know that those animals. The Navy works with those guys to train them, and mm -hmm. they do have you know great results in training them. So they are you know, potentially they have relationships with humans. In my experience, the harbor seals typically that we get as pups, um, they're usually pretty, you know, docile and when they're pups and then there's there's always a certain level, we always say the switch goes on. Mm -hmm. You know, and all of a sudden they're snappy and they're hissing at you and biting you. And like teenagers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're wild like teenagers, yeah. So there's definitely a point at which and I don't think everybody really worries as much about those animals in printing mm -hmm. because it just seems like, and once they get out of here, we're, when they're released, they're just gone, you know, so. Oh, okay. Like yeah. teenagers. Yeah, <laughs> once like they're teenagers, gone, they're gone yeah. until they need money. <laughs> yeah. And so, so how long have you been volunteering? Actually, three years. Three years. Yeah. And yeah. what's the most surprising thing to you when you first started? Um, probably just that being in the Bay Area mm -hmm. and seeing these animals turn up in really urban places you know we forget that we're surrounded by the bay here or mm -hmm. we don't forget it but I mean they're sort of our neighbors or they are our neighbors and um, what kind of urban places were some strange places that you <laughs> well found these guys? I've actually picked up an animal on 880 on the freeway what with that <laughs> actually came out yeah in the early morning it was in the morning commute yes we were saying but he's going for his coffee <laughs> nice yeah, for Starbucks yeah crooked little smile on her face tells a tale of grace that's all